worship. Happy Reformation Sunday. Uh, good to share that video with you today. And there are more videos like that on Lutheran World Relief's website. Thank you to everyone who brought items for the personal care kits. We had enough items for 85 and then a, a Thrivent card to purchase some more items and complete kits. So we'll be sending at least 90. Thank you. Um, our fifth and sixth graders and a few parents are going to be helping put those together uh, during Sunday school today. And then we want to say congratulations to Garrison Hubka for his first place at the sectionals in cross country. If you see him in the next couple weeks, you can congratulate him, a 17-minute 5K. And Cole Krugel got third in sectionals, so they both get to go to state. That's exciting. And then next Sunday, we have the celebration of all saints. So it's a special Sunday to remember those who have died in the last year that we want to remember and thank God for. And those that were part of this congregation have names listed in the bulletin. But we'd also like you to have a chance to remember others as well that are important to you. So there'll be a piece of paper, probably right around here, <laughs> for you before the service to write a name and they'll, they'll be part of the prayers at that point in the service and a time to light candles for others on your hearts as well. Um, we'll do a few other announcements later in the service, but I, I didn't want to forget about those two. So. Welcome, welcome. May we continue to seek Christ and allow for Christ's renewal and reformation in our own personal lives and in the life of our congregation. We'll begin with the grounding moment. We often arrive to worship in a state of forgetting. Let us allow our bodies to remember as we gather for worship. Trace a cross on your forehead. We remember that we are created and claimed by God. Trace a cross on your heart. We remember that we've been given new life in Christ and a purpose in God's world. Trace a cross on your hand. We remember that we have been given the power of the Holy Spirit Loving God, thank you. Thank you for drawing us back to you again and again and again. Amen. Let us come together in the confession knowing God is eager to forgive us. Because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can trust that God loves us unconditionally. Therefore, we can tell God the whole truth. We are beautiful and broken. People of God, let us confess the ways that we forget to live in the way of love that Jesus taught. Let me pray together. God, the weight of sin is heavy through our actions and our inactions. We have hurt others. We forget to trust your promises and live as though you aren't active in our lives. We forget the stories of your mission to bring wholeness and justice, and we fall into despair. Awaken us to the truth once again so that our burden is lightened and we can keep learning to walk in your ways. Hear the good news, beloveds, as far as the east is from the west. God, our creator, redeemer, and the Holy Spirit has lifted your sin from you and remembers it no more. Walk in the joy of your salvation in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our entrance hymn. Martin Luther's hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, on the screen and in the hymnal 504.
Let us greet one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Let us join in the prayer of the day. O oh God, sometimes we forget. We tell ourselves that the good things in our lives are because we are so fabulous and we fail to see your hand at work. In wilderness times, our eyes are closed to your tender presence. Hear our amnesia, God, and wake us up to your steadfast love and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated for the scripture readings. Good morning. A reading from Deuteronomy chapter 8. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock, and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember, the Lord, your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. If you do forget the Lord your God and follow other gods to serve and worship them, I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. The word of the Lord. Be the second reading from Joshua chapter 24. The people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land, Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 46. If you would please join me on the bolded verses. God is our shelter and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not be afraid, even if the earth is shaken, and mountains fall into the ocean depths. Even if the seas roar and rage and the hills are shaken by the violence, there is a river that brings joy to the city of God, to the sacred house of the Most High. God is in that city, and it will never be destroyed. At early dawn, he will come to its aid. Nations are terrified, kingdoms are shaken, God thunders and the earth dissolves. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come and see what the Lord has done. See what amazing things he has done on earth. He stops wars all over the world. He breaks bows, destroys spears, and sets shields on fire. Stop fighting, he says, and know that I am God supreme among the nations, supreme over the world. The, Lo the Lord Almighty is with us, with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge.
Holy Gospel according to John, the eighth chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Here you should maybe see, we invite our children to come up. Good morning. Sorry. Good morning. Nice to see you today. Good morning. Jordan. So I have a question for you. Is it easier for you to do something by yourself or to use teamwork? Teamwork? There are a few things that it's good to do by yourself, isn't it? It feels good, like tying your shoes maybe. It's good when we can learn how to do that, we can do that by ourselves. But sometimes you might need help from somebody, like if you get a bad knot in your shoes that you can't get it out. And there's other times where you, maybe you're building something or you're playing a game that's a lot more fun to have more people, isn't it? To have friends or cousins or someone working on that with you. Or maybe you're working on a really hard problem and you just can't figure it out, so you have to ask your teacher or your mom or dad or someone, and that's, that's okay. We're supposed to help each other. And the, the story that Gina read from the Bible today, God is saying that God is with us when we have hard times, and God is with us when things are going really good, when everything seems to be working out really well for us. That when we're doing something by ourselves, God is with us, helping us. And when we're working with others, God is with us. God's helping us. God is always with us. And it's good to remember that God is here to help. And the best thing that we can do then is to say thank you. Right? We can say thank you to God for giving us our brains and our bodies to do things. And we can say thank you to God for giving us our family and our friends and our teachers and our church family for being able to work together. We can always say thank you to God for God's in everything. Now, Gene and I have something kind of fun that we want your help with. Today, we want to say thank you to the congregation for working together so that we can share God's gifts and share God's message and help others grow in their faith. So you help us figure out what do we have here to show today. We're saying thank you for giving gifts so that we can have, what's that first box? Lights, yeah. So we can have lights and the furnace works. Yeah, that's important, isn't it? What else does Gina have over there? What's that? (laughs) We're getting ready for winter. Do you kids know what that is? It is a filter. (laughs) Yes, good. Can you hold it up? There we go. So you can be listening and hearing good things while you're keeping your hands busy. Oh, that's very important. Say thank you to the congregation for providing Bibles for you. It's something that goes in the candles. It is. It's a very special liquid oil. For the candles, so they shine bright and remind us of, of God's presence. 
and God's light shining in us. Is that getting heavy? There's a Bible for the bigger kids. I bet Katie can figure it out. Yeah, it's choir music. <laughs> What's that book about? So we have special things for that. It takes a lot of people working together to have a healthy congregation. Tell everyone here, thank you. Thank you. And now you can keep holding your things and we'll say a prayer. Okay? We'll say a very easy prayer. Ready? And think about Jesus being with us. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for always being with us. Thank you for always being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Okay, give Gina your things, and I'll give you a treat. And the boys can give you a piece or a bulletin. Let's see. Oh, you got one. Here's Sawyer. Oh, we had some other pictures that we printed that didn't make it in the bay. We'll show them next week. All right, you guys can have one too for helping. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I turned myself off. Beloved of God's heart and my heart, grace and peace to you from the God who remembers even when we forget. She remembered me. A young woman knocked on my office door at the end of a long Wednesday. I was putting away things after confirmation. I want to tell you, she said, that there are some real Jesus people in your church. The woman said as she stood in my doorway, I invited her to sit down, and her story just came tumbling out. The end of a significant relationship, alcohol abuse, the loss of her job. I grew up in this church, she continued, but my parents moved away, and it had been a long time since I came to worship. But last Sunday, instead of drinking, I decided to come to church. And I sat down by myself near the back, and someone handed me a bulletin. I listened to the songs. I felt peaceful. I didn't come up for communion, and I almost left. But then this older woman, as she came back from communion, she came and sat down right by me, and we talked after the service. 
She invited me to lunch. She remembered me. Can you believe it? She remembered me. I have hope for my recovery. She is going to help me. Wes was a retired, well, he's still living. Wes is a retired fourth grade school teacher. And he took to visiting nursing home residents in his retirement. I remember trying to really thank him for this at one point, and he just kept shrugging his shoulders, saying, I like being around people. It's, that's just what I'm doing now. <laughs> that was his explanation. We're spending every other day, full afternoons, visiting residents. And one day when I was up at the care center, a staff person stopped me to say, does Wes go to your church? Yeah, he does. He's very faithful, I said. You know, she told me, he visits the people who have no visitors, especially the men. And I want you to know how he has transformed several people on this floor. It's amazing what someone who cares can do. Wes visits, you know, almost every day, even some weekends, and now Alan goes to activities, and he never used to leave his room. And Les is kinder to the staff. People don't get yelled at anymore. And Paul will smile and actually visit with us. And it's all because of Wes, because he remembers them. We are here today to remember and to be remembered in our singing songs of God, in listening to scripture, in greeting one another, we are giving God's word body and breath. We become conspirators with God. Together breathers, that's what conspirator means. Shaped by word and song and love, we are joined to an ancient story that changes us. Remembering this story is our story, that we too are God's people, makes us live in the world a bit differently. Henry Miller wrote, humans' work in the world is to remember to remember. To remember, to give limbs and body again to this ancient and new story of God's being among us and the holiness of everyday life. Remembering that we are not alone, that we are to live as God's people in this world. People who have not done everything on our own people who have regard for others. Our main Bible story today is at a pivotal moment in the lives of God's people. They have arrived at the edge of the promised land. 400 years of slavery followed by 40 years of wandering in the desert are behind them. A new life is laid out ahead. Dan Erlander describes Deuteronomy as Moses' commencement speech. I like that. Moses' commencement speech. Words that are meant to connect what has gone before to what is about to begin. You may wonder if the people are paying attention, <laughs> like the graduates on graduation day, and what will stick. What will they remember in one minute, or one hour, or one year? Will they remember? Moses' parting gift to the people is this invitation to take hold of the blessed gift of remembering. He is weaving a story of honest self-appraisal that will lead to honest dealings with God and with others. if the people will claim it 
with both their heads and their hearts. Remembering well will incur blessings. A right relationship with God, which leads to a right relationship with others. Remembering wrong will be a recipe for disaster. A story based on the myth of self-reliance and forgetting what God has done and is doing, how God has helped along the way and gives direction and strength, will lead, forgetting that, will lead to an unjust, ruinous society. Personal and collective amnesia comes with dire consequences, and the people will be dismembered. The people are to remember how God has provided for them in the wilderness. Life exists and is sustained by the goodness and grace of God. This God who knows who we are and has committed God's self to our present and to our future. Joshua takes this theme of Moses and puts a question before the people. Choose this day whom you will serve. Will you serve God who is the deliverer? The God who has never left your side? Or will you worship the idols of your neighbors? Or your self-made idols? Forgetting God. Untroubled by memory. Unshackled from commitment and duty to God and to one another. This Sunday, in addition to being Reformation Day, is Commitment Sunday. That day in the year that we are asked to be thoughtful and prayerful about our financial support and our investment of time and talents in our congregation. Making a commitment is a spiritual decision. Our commitment to God and God's work in our local congregation is important. And our actions shape our beliefs. Our actions lead the way into our beliefs. If we make a decision to give a portion of our income, a portion of our time for the well-being of what God is doing among us, we will experience joy and a different type of connection as well as a path forward. Make a commitment that you feel excited about out of a sense of God's goodness and wanting God's goodness to pass to others. Thank you for that commitment, that intention. I was impressed by how many of those envelopes have come in already by people knowing that they weren't able to be here today. We have a congregation of intentional people. As Moses and his fellow travelers received a mysterious food that fell from heaven each morning like dew, that they called manna, what is it? We too receive what we need day by day in sometimes mysterious and sometimes humorous ways, but day by day. Just enough for today. We learn that we cannot survive on bread alone, that we need spiritual nourishment, moral guidance, food for the soul, and friends for the journey. For Christian faith is not meant to be walked alone. It's not really possible to walk alone. We gather to encourage one another to walk this road of faith together In the practice of our faith, our practice of trusting God, of trusting in God's provision, we develop strength and skill that we will need in the future. We exercise and strengthen a connection to God that will lead us to better relationships with others and a connection to God that will be there when we most need it. 
when we really aren't sure what the next day holds or if we can make it to that day. Then in our times of frustration or sorrow or uncertainty, we can make the choice to walk with God because we remember how God has been there for us. God will give us what we need to keep moving with love and courage. The road to faith cannot be made by wishing or whining or circular conversation. It is made by remembering and walking, by setting out step by step together in order that our relationship to stuff, (laughs) our relationship to the things of this world will not take the place of our relationship to God or to one another. And when faced with a choice to stand up for someone who has been picked on or pushed down, we can trust that God is faithful and will help us overcome evil. And when we feel picked on or pushed down, we can trust that God will provide someone for us to encourage us. For who is stronger? The person who can punch out the bad guy or the person who can convince a bad guy to become good? Our lives of faith are all about renewal and transformation. Each time we remember our baptism, each time we share communion together, each time we sing a song of the risen Christ, We are asking Jesus to live again in us, to fill us with the Holy Spirit, that we may join God in the ongoing struggle to be set free and to set others free, free to live in the grace and goodness of God, that we would not lose our way. We will be remembered, knowing our place with God and with God's people, in the story that has no end, in the life that has no end. Thanks be to God.
join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of God's creation. God, our fortress, we pray for the church. Write your law of love on the hearts of your people that we remain steadfast in our witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our liberator, we pray for your earth. Reform and reorient our relationship with the environment that we faithfully care for all of your creation. Bless all farmers and ranchers as they finish the harvest and prepare for winter. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our refuge and strength, we pray for the nations. Where they are in an uproar, bring wise leadership and comfort for those in distress. Make wars to cease and peace to enter every land. For relief and peaceful resolution to the ongoing violence in Haiti, we pray. For an end to the continued war in Ukraine, we pray. For our upcoming national and local elections and election judges who will serve at the polls, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our very present help in trouble, we pray for those in need. For the victims of human trafficking, we pray. Show mercy, mercy to refugees and all fleeing from danger. Shelter any without homes. Calm all, calm all who are facing illness, surgery, or a new diagnosis. We pray for those known to us, Jim, Connie, Todd, Jerry, Linda, and Beulah Turbinson, who broke her wrist, and Pastor Herman Baker uh, had a heart attack, and those on our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our Redeemer, we pray for our congregation. Bless all who are preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Open their hearts to your Holy Spirit, teach them your word, and give them courage to pro proclaim their faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our stronghold, we give thanks for those who have gone before us in faith, especially Martin Luther and all reformers. Renew and reform as we strive to continue in your word. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And you share the peace with someone next to you. We are thankful for those who shared about why this congregation matters to them. And Zach Queensland's video is our last one of this stewardship focus. Thank you, Zach.
Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Zachary Queensland, and I'm a proud member of our Savior's Lutheran Church. And I want to take the time to thank you all for uh, providing me with this opportunity to share my testimony regarding why I am a part of this congregation and how my participation in this church has impacted my faith in Christ significantly. Ever since I arrived here at Our Saviors in the fifth grade, my heart and spirit has been greatly moved by the love, the grace, and the compassion that this congregation displays on a daily basis. I speak for myself as well as countless others in my family when I say that this church has served as a beacon of light and hope because it has never abandoned or lost sight of its first love, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This congregation has done a phenomenal job in terms of, de of demonstrating genuine love, care, and concern uh, for others in the church and in the outside community. I feel Jesus' abiding presence every day with this congregation. His presence is made manifest in the moments that we spend in prayer together, when we extend affirming words and affectionate smiles, in the many enjoyable conversations that we have before and after worship, and also when we serve joyfully together. All these examples point towards this congregation's tireless devotion and steadfast commitment to glorifying our Heavenly Father and making His Son, Jesus, known to all those who hunger for the bread of life and those who thirst for the living water. Additionally, I am proud to be a member of this congregation because of the immense joy that radiates all throughout this church. This, this has been shown by your selfless service on ministry teams in being generous with your financial gifts and how we embrace children and involve them even more in worship and also in paying homes uh, and paying visits to the homes of others. Participation in this congregation has truly enriched and blessed my walk with Jesus and helped my faith in Him grow exponentially. I have always recognized this congregation to be very service-oriented, whether it be congregants serving as Sunday school teachers, helping serve Lent meals during the Lenten season, allowing the youth to go on mission trips, and also being a part of the many outreach ministries that uplift and encourage our local communities and the world. Experiences like these have given me the opportunity to see the life-altering effects that the service has had on the lives of others and also has enabled me to see how the Holy Spirit works through those uh, acts of service. Now I would like to talk about in specific terms the various mission trips that I was blessed to go on and how they impacted me greatly. I had the extraordinary privilege of going on mission trips to North Carolina, Texas, and Colorado. These adventures have enriched my life tremendously because these acts of service during these trips have taught me a very powerful lesson for life. That, that the ultimate joy and most fulfilling aspect of life is serving others to show God's love and to develop meaningful and authentic connections with others in the process. Uh, these and many other opportunities have made me into a more empathetic, humble, considerate, forgiving, and loving person. However, there is an, yet another important point to be made. These opportunities that I have described would not have been made possible if it was not for the faithfulness and the generous support from you congregants. We are eternally grateful for the faith, the trust, and the confidence that you have placed in your youth. The love that you demonstrate to younger people and older people alike is fulfilling the mission of Jesus. This congregation is truly a family that celebrates and encourages one another in times of joy and triumph, and that uplifts and comforts each other in moments of trial and affliction. You are all the salt of the earth and the lights of the world representing Jesus, who are dedicated to serving him and your neighbors. I want to extend my heartfelt thanks and appreciation to this congregation that welcomed me with open arms those many years ago. The love of this congregation and the opportunities that you have all afforded me have assisted me in terms of nurturing a deeper relationship with God 
and with you, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. So I want to close by saying that I love you all, and may God bless you and guide you. God's peace. Good morning. I have the prayer for stewardship. Generous and loving God, we come to you in thanksgiving, knowing that all we are and all that we have is a gift from you. In faith and love, help us to do your will. We are listening. Speak our words into the depth of our souls that we may hear you cle clearly. We offer to you this day all the facets of our lives whether it be at home, at work, or at school. We seek to be patient, to be merciful, to be generous, to be holy. Give us the wisdom and insight to understand your will for us and the fever to carry out our good intentions. We offer our gifts of time, talent, and possessions to you as a true act of faith, to reflect our love to you and to our neighbors. Help us to reach out to others as you have reached out to us. Amen. Thank you so much, Zach. Thank you, Harlan. Let's join together in the prayer. Generous God, your steadfast love endures forever, and our cups are filled to overflowing as we offer our gifts for the sake of your mission in the world we offer also our whole selves knowing that we have been given all that we need in order to be part of your work in the world we pray this through jesus who gave his life for all amen please join together in our offertory song I invite you to stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. It is, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that we should all times and all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by Christ's glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the church on earth and in heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
praise you, O oh God, for inspiring leaders like Martin Luther, for the universe beyond our knowing, for friends and strangers and family, for your covenant people, for centuries of faithful Christians, and for your people present today. We praise you for your son, Jesus Christ, who on the night before he died, took bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and offered it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we do remember you. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God come, for all is ready, all are welcome. You may be seated. As you come up for communion, please use the hand sanitizer in your pews. Those that need gluten-free wafers, those are available by the baptismal font. And there is wine and grape juice at each station. And then following communion, you may place your cups in the trays on the side. Take a moment to pause as you receive these simple gifts of God that remind us of God's presence and the goodness of creation and give us strength to live as God's people in our week ahead. Please do sing together as we share the Lord's Supper as well.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you in your faith and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together. Loving God, in this holy meal you have given us the presence of Christ. You have strengthened our faith. You have poured out your grace. As we are sent into the world, we go knowing that we've been given all we need to love as Jesus loved. It is in his holy name we pray. Amen. We'll join together in this fun sending song. Kids can come up and, and get an instrument. It's a simple song, and you'll notice uh, we sing the first part twice, and then we sing the second part twice. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.